Assalamu alaikum khawateen huzrat. Wasim Hassan welcomes you to lecture number 15 of Marketing for Non-Profits, MKT 628 at the Virtual University of Pakistan. The topic of learning is brand raising, meaning how to raise a brand. Whenever we talk about raising a brand, the image it really flashes into our mind is that of a logo, its colors, and all the associated features. But the fact of the matter is that branding is not limited to that. This is just the one particular part of the whole branding process. Branding, in effect, goes far beyond that, and it is the upshot, in the meaning the result, of a very comprehensive, holistic, all-encompassing kind of a strategic process that starts with the vision of the founder or the founders. Once the founders could have the vision in place, they try to put together so many different resources needed to carry out the program which they envision. And that gives rise to what we call the strategic intent and out of that flow so many different strategic steps that we follow in order to complete that particular process and at the end of it could we get what we call a particular program and we brand that program in a comprehensive way like the following. Branding basically takes place at three different levels of the organization. The first level is known as the organizational level itself. The second one is known as the identity level, whereas the third one is known as the experiential level. All the levels are extremely important, but the fact remains that the first level, which is the organizational level, is the driving force behind all that happens within the organizations. And another fact is that it drives all the programs, the HR function, and uh, all the decisions that organizations make in order to execute their programs and then accomplish their missions. So we can say that uh, the different steps that are part of the strategic process are the vision translated into strategic intent, further flowing into strong culture, which basically is a collection of different values and values define the way we work within the organizations. If we are very passionate about working on a particular cause, that becomes a value because uh, it is the passion that drives us to go to the work and do it in the most efficient and effective way. Strong culture gives us uh, certain capabilities and core competencies out of which we get what we call sustainable competitive advantage. We have this advantage which really differentiates us from others. And with this, with the point of differentiation, we get into what we call a mission, and that mission is expressed in very explicit terms so that everybody understands what the organization is all about, what it does, and how it is going to fulfill the vision with which the whole thing started off in the first place. And once we have mission in place, we carve out the right positioning for the program that we are working on, and out of the positioning, we get the personality of the program, or in other words, the brand. I'm talking about program which is going to be synonymous with the brand because here we're talking in the context of non-profits and we do not call it a product, although a program is a product as well. The organizational level is extremely important because all the steps of the process that I have just enumerated are the ones which get translated into different communications. The fact is, until the time, whatever we do as part of the process is communicated to all the audiences, those steps are not fulfilled. And the only way to bring to a completion of the program, we've got to talk about that, we've got to communicate verbally, in writing, by doing so many different things. 
and therefore communication plays an extremely important role in highlighting the organizational level because if we talk about it with a sense of uniqueness for each of our targets, we raise funds and we advocate the cause with that point of differentiation which is the basis of our positioning. And of course, with a strong position, we reach the targets and influence them with the difference that we think we carry and with the conviction on their part, audiences come forward to support our cause. And therefore, communication plays an extremely important role in the making the cause visible with that uniqueness that we are trying to pinpoint and trying to highlight. The next level is uh, the identity level, which uh, basically is a combination of two sub-levels. The first one is known as the visual identity, whereas the second one is known as the messaging platform. And as a matter of fact, these two sub-levels are the ones which are even more associated with the branding exercise. And the fact again remains that the branding is not limited to the visual identity of the brand, although this portion is extremely important. And it is also not limited to the messaging platform or a collection of two at the same time. It again goes beyond that. It is based on what I just talked about as the part of the strategic process in terms of the organizational level. And that level then getting translated into the identity platform which consists of these two sub-levels. Until the time that we have total clarity of the organizational level and we are very clear about the point of differentiation, positioning and the personality of the program or the organization, we cannot really define the right identity uh, for the organization or for that matter, cannot really come up with uh, the most appropriate communications in terms of our vision, mission, values, statement, so on and so forth. It is important and rather mandatory that we translate all these elements into very explicit expressions uh, which uh, have to be understood and owned by all those working for the organization and all those who are actively supporting the cause, meaning all the important stakeholders. We should not really hesitate involving important stakeholders when it comes to creating uh, these statements because they are a very significant portion of uh, the messaging platform. And these are the statements through which we express ourselves and we let others know what is the cause and what is it all about and what is the point of our destination. After the identity level, we get into what we call the experiential level. This basically is a combination of the different tools of communications at the disposal of the marketing people who put them together the way they think is the most appropriate the mixture of communications in order to reach the target audiences. And uh, these tools of communication or communications uh, consist of uh, so many different the media. We have uh, electronic media consisting of the cyberspace of which uh, we have websites, blogs, emails, uh, we have social networks, and uh, then we have um, the traditional uh, the print media consisting of newspapers, periodicals, articles, reports, brochures, flyers, and so on and so forth. And then we have personal spaces in terms of the meetings that take place between us, meaning the marketing people, and our audiences, consisting of all the audiences, starting from the sponsors to the clients, meaning the people or the community for whom we are working. We have galas, we have seminars, conferences, and we have promotional programs of different kinds. Then we have on-air communications by way of having the television networks, we have radios, and the fact is that the YouTube is also considered as one of the tools of on-air communications. And then we have media coverage by the electronic media. And last but not the least, we have 
text messaging. The mobile telephones which have become the latest tool of communications because with the help of that, we can very quickly reach our target audience for advocacy in the first place and also for fundraising. Um, it is um, considered to be one of the more important and effective um, in the media uh, the nowadays that we have at our disposal. With um, these um, levels, uh, we can say that um, the first one is all about the philosophy of uh, the organization, starting with the vision, uh, translated into the different strategic steps, which we call the organizational level, because those are the steps that drive all the execution regarding the program or the programs that we are executing. And uh, unless we have uh, the complete clarity of all those steps, and unless we really can relate all those with each other in an integrative way, we cannot come up with something which is very holistic and which really is integrated into something that gives rise to effective communications. And communications is the name of the game here when we talk about brand raising and the bases or the supports that we need to have to raise the brand are the three levels that I'm talking about. Let us take a look at um, a graphical presentation of uh, these steps so that we can develop um, an in-depth and insightful understanding of the process, the way it uh, takes place and uh, the way it lays the ground for eventual communications that take place uh, with the help of all the tools that are part of the experiential level. As you can see from this illustration, we have the vision the right on top and this is the vision of the founder. The fact is that the founder or founders do not remain with the organizations all the time. They disappear from the scene, which is a fact of life. And from them, others pick up the threads where they leave and others adopt all that they have left behind. And out of that vision, we create what we call strategic intent. And you will recall that this basically is a function of resources, our capabilities, and core competencies. Now, the question here is, what is it that is connected with raising of the brand when we talk about resources, capabilities, and our core competencies? Well, if we are not in a position to put together all the resources which are most appropriate for deployment, for a particular cause, our brand is going to be weak. Same is the case with our capabilities and core competencies. Good core competencies, which cannot be copied by others, which cannot be substituted, and even if those can be substituted at a later stage at a very high cost on part of the competition. That is something that is going to provide us with a very solid base and a platform for moving forward. Because out of those core competencies, we create a competitive advantage. And if we do not have that competitive advantage, meaning that we do not have some point of differentiation which is different from others and different in a unique way, not in a simple way, but rather also a unique way, which can home into the minds of our audiences. We cannot create a strong basis for the brand. And we cannot really go ahead with the kind of communications that we need to put together in order to make our program, our communications for the program, effective and reachable. Another thing that we have to take care of here is the external environment. We take a close look at the environment all the time because if there's a need to bring about a change in our vision and resultantly in all the steps that I'm talking about, then we need to do that as a response to that. The fact is that the vision does not really change every now and then. It takes quite a bit of time before we bring about certain adjustments to the vision for the organization and uh, hence all the resultant elements that get out of the vision. Um, but the important fact is that we do not lose sight of any possible changes taking place in the environment. 
And this is how all these things are connected and uh, lay a ground for the far brand raising to take place. You think to yourself, and you'll be convinced that without a good point of differentiation that has such a comprehensive and sophisticated background in terms of all the steps of the process, we cannot really carve out the correct position for the program. And unless we have the correct position, we cannot communicate properly. And we cannot really express the right personality of the organization, despite having all the capabilities and competencies at our disposal. If we cannot reach the right point of differentiation and the most accurate positioning, which is simple and unique, we cannot express ourselves through our communications. And as you can see from this illustration, we are down to the next step, which basically is a collection of the two levels that work simultaneously. We have the visual identity, then we have the messaging platform. Visual identity and messaging platform have to be a true reflection of the identity of the organization. And we derive this identification out of the organizational level that defines the positioning and personality of the organization. So this is where the connect is. And this is where the sensitivity is. Once uh, we have uh, the vagueness out of the process and we have total clarity, we go ahead with the development of the logo, the colors and the images and we start expressing uh, our different uh, strategic elements um, in terms of uh, the very specific statements which become the part of the messaging platform and so much so that uh, all the people within the organization and all those who are connected the way that have to almost remember those statements because you all have to express yourselves at different times, at different points, to different audiences in just about the same way. It is not that one per person expresses the oneself in one way and the next one in another because that is going to cause a lot of variability to the way that we have expressed ourselves as an organization and the way that we have attempted to create the identity uh, of the organization and the resulting messaging platform. We then get down to the experiential level, which is a collection of uh, different tools of communication. Here, the important thing is that we have to have somebody or rather a small team within the organization if we happen to be a small organization, if we happen to be a large organization, we can have a large team, of course, but a team of marketing people that is knowledgeable not only about the traditional uh, the marketing uh, communications, but also uh, have the savvy of digital marketing communications. Because we are passing through a period which is a collection, a combination of uh, both sides. And uh, therefore, uh, putting uh, communications uh, together in terms of uh, the cyberspace and in terms of other uh, means of communications is uh, a demand uh, which uh, has to be fulfilled uh, by a team that uh, is knowledgeable about uh, all the tools of communication. Here uh, we have to be very uh, particular and sensitive uh, to uh, the one factor uh, when we talk about uh, the internet in particular. Um, we are here talking about uh, two-way communications. As uh, you will agree with me, um, traditional uh, marketing communications are just one way. One-way traffic because uh, we talk with them through advertising, through television commercials, through radio programs, so on and so forth, but there is no interaction uh, with the audiences. With the help of internet and the cyberspace, the communications have become two-way. And we are interacting with our audiences all the time, which means it entails positive advocacy as well as negative advocacy. The meaning there are people who will talk very positively about your program, 
uh, or about the product that you are trying to sell, you have launched, or you're working on, you're trying to maintain. And there are audiences that are going to be negative about uh, certain elements of your program. And therefore, you have to have people who can collect that information uh, on a daily basis uh, continually so that you can sift information, meaning good from bad. And if you are um, getting feedback, which is mostly positive, you've got to reinforce that practice. But vigilance is the name of the game. And that's the price that you have to pay if you are getting into digital marketing communications, known as DMC. Communication has uh, a lot of power. Whether we do it uh, in a traditional way or we make a combination of traditional marketing communications along with uh, uh, digital marketing communications, which uh, basically is integrated marketing communications, meaning IMC, the power of communications cannot be denied. And therefore, we again have to take a look at uh, all those features that uh, can make our communications very um, coherent and consistent. And here, okay, one more time, I would like to take you back to the strategic process out of which uh, flows the coherence that we look for while putting together our communications. And um, it is uh, by going through okay, all these steps okay, in a logical way that we end up okay, with a communication process which is not vague and which is not whimsical. I think that's the right word to use because we cannot afford to have people sitting in the marketing department or for that matter somewhere among the top management or also as part of the stakeholders who might point out we don't like this communication, we don't like this particular color, we don't like the way you know, this name is written. They have to support all that with the help of certain strategic considerations. It just cannot be whimsical. So coherent and consistent communications basically are an upshot of that particular process which gives legitimacy and authenticity to our communications. And on that basis, could we create the identity of the organization, which means could we get into two levels simultaneously. Could we uh, develop the visual identity uh, for the organization and we start working on the messaging platform. So we can say that um, good communications, if arrived at through the process that I've just talked about, um, give us a lot of benefits, out of which some are extremely significant. But the one is that we have coherent and uh, consistent communications. The other one is we get consistency of image at every point of exposure or interaction with our audiences. We are talking about the same thing over and over again. We're not changing our presentations. We're not changing our written expressions. And we are very consistent about creating a particular image. And that is what we get out of these good, effective communications. And don't forget, if we have coherent communications, which lead towards consistency, then automatically what we get on our programs is legitimacy, credibility, reliability, reassurance, so on and so forth. So many different adjectives which you can use for the programs. And this is what you call branding. You, you create and you raise your brand by becoming very strategic, by giving due importance and consideration to so many different elements that belong here and there all along the strategic process and then arrive at something which is oversimplified by lay people uh, or even those professionals who do not really have the savvy of marketing by saying that this logo is a beautiful piece of marketing. Well, it is an oversimplified statement, but the fact is it really contains volumes if you try to translate that into marketing terms. Because when you do that, you will go back to the strategic process and the will start from the vision and then get down into so many different uh, flowing elements which have given you what you see there as the end product. However, 
I would like to add one thing here, and that is the raising of the brand is uh, not a short-term exercise. It is a long-term thing, and uh, any organization that has to have uh, the patience to raise the rightmost brand, it uh, does not pop out overnight. Um, it is um, a reflection of a lot of uh, the hard work in terms of uh, the planning, coordination, and uh, teamwork. And uh, therefore, the end result that we see uh, when we take a look at uh, those organizations with which we may call you know, good brands in themselves, that we can uh, rest assured that um, the amount of work that has gone behind the brand uh, is enormous. And uh, given that, that we can now define the process of brand raising uh, as the one with which uh, develops a very clear and uh, cohesive organizational identity and communications systems that support organizations' mission. So this is uh, uh, a statement which has to be interpreted a little more uh, because when we talk about the organizational identity, we are talking basically in the context of nonprofits. And we're not talking about one particular brand uh, or one particular product which is launched by you know, a, a commercial enterprise. We are a nonprofit enterprise, um, an organization uh, which uh, is uh, a brand in itself, the program, the organization is supposed to execute is the product and that's the brand. And therefore, it is the organization for which you know, we have to create a very strong identity and that is raising of the brand. Having learned the basics of uh, the brand raising, meaning the foundation on which we expand and uh, raise our brand, we now need to get into a little more details of the three levels that I talked about in the previous component. In other words, I'm going to talk about the organizational level, the identity level, and the experiential level uh, separately a little more in depth because there are certain elements to all these levels that need to be shed light on. And uh, they need to be highlighted uh, in relation to their importance to the strategic process. So in other words, we're getting into added layers of the process in order to have better insight into the whole process. So. Talking about the organizational level, let me tell you that uh, I have divided this particular level into two sub-areas because the one area is uh, undertaken by the top management, whereas the other one is uh, taken up by the biomarketing people within the organization. The reason the first area is uh, undertaken by the top management is because it consists of uh, things like uh, vision, the mission, values, and objectives. And uh, these are the kind of elements uh, for which uh, we need total ded dedication of uh, the top management. And when I say that, it doesn't really mean it doesn't really have input from uh, the other staff members like uh, the marketing people in particular, because you cannot really shape up your objectives and then translate them into very specific goals until uh, you have talked with uh, the marketing people. But the point here is, that it is the top management that looks into uh, these elements and these are driven by the top management, so to say. And top management they may also, or rather they should, involve important stakeholders like the board of uh, directors and uh, the other sponsors who take active interest uh, into your nonprofit. We do not lose sight of the fact that uh, we do approach uh, our sponsors from time to time because of paucity of funds and not having to see the uh, most appropriate uh, level of uh, the human resource and therefore uh, sponsors who are from the professional world and who in themselves happen to be um, highly placed uh, the managers and governors of their uh, the businesses can help us with uh, different issues in relation to marketing, finance, the purchasing and so on and so forth. So that's why I said that uh, the elements of uh, the organizational level in terms of the vision, mission, values, and objectives are the ones that also may be 
uh, discussed with, with, uh, with all those people who matter to us in terms of raising of funds and um, in terms of advocacy. Because uh, without that help, I think uh, our importance um, would not really be uh, measured as much or on the same scale as uh, we would like it to be. The other uh, the part of the organizational level elements pertain to the marketing area in particular, uh, because uh, here uh, we are talking about uh, positioning, uh, the audience and personality in particular. There are uh, the other uh, related uh, the elements to these uh, three, uh, the main elements of this particular part, but uh, I'm gonna hold on to that until the time I start talking about all those one by one. So let's go back to the first part, which is the vision, mission, values, and objectives. I think uh, the lot has been said about uh, the vision and mission that they basically are founder driven and uh, out of the vision that we have the, the mission in place. Here, the importance of the mission factor is in terms of it being very explicit. We always say that uh, the mission has to be expressed in the very um, understandable uh, terminology so that uh, the audiences who are targeted are fully in a position to understand and appreciate what the organization is all about. So it is not about uh, only the uh, external audiences, it also is about the internal audience because when it comes to internal marketing, uh, we have to sell the, the mission uh, to our staff members who have to own it because uh, missing that uh, the ownership of the mission statement, we cannot really expect total dedication and commitment of those staff members who have not been exposed to the mission statement. And therefore, they have to be taken on board in terms of making their inputs so that the words that have gone into the statement are weighed in their totality, in their entirety, and nothing is missed out. So consistency and clarity of the mission statement is of utmost importance here when you talk about the organizational level. We may also like to talk about uh, a change in mission. Well, let me tell you, change in mission doesn't really come about every now and then. Uh, however, depending on the external environment, it may become uh, incumbent on us to look into the mission statement and bring about certain changes. And when we get into that situation, of course, we have to bring about all the corresponding changes um, and all the elements that are uh, the part of the process that we are going through right now. Same holds true for the vision statement, which basically talks about the future and which could be lofty and the futuristic because that's the statement which tells us that we're really, we would like to be uh, like five years hence, 10 years hence, so on and so forth. And therefore, anything that uh, they may have um, a bearing on uh, that vision in the long term, we have to take that into account. And this also is a fact which is, uh, even, uh, which is rather remote in terms of its happening uh, very frequently. Uh, the visions they don't really change um, frequently. And uh, whenever there is a need for that change, nevertheless, we have to look into that and uh, adjust that vision so that um, corresponding changes could be brought about in everything, starting from the strategic intent right down to the positioning and personality of the, with the organization. In the hope that uh, we do not really have to carry out um, these changes uh, frequently, we stick to uh, what we have learned about the vision and the mission factors. If we say that uh, a good mission statement it has to be uh, audience centric in that it is uh, simple, it is uh, understandable, it is the one which connects our audiences, it really engages them, it really motivates them into taking the action that we want them to take, it uh, brings about the behavior change and so on and so forth, and it is the one uh, which uh, is helpful 
toward uh, the fundraising, advocacy, and all those things, then it has to be good at communication as well. Until the time it is spelled out with very explicitly and in very clear terms, it cannot be communicated in just about the same way. And therefore, the importance of communication comes here. We've got to write down the mission statement. Why am I talking about writing down the mission statement? Because of the fact that we do not really want any vagueness in terms of our mission. And we want to take um, any element of subjectivity out of uh, the mission. If you talk about uh, your mission with uh, the different uh, the people, you may get uh, the different answers. You know why? Because um, nothing is formalized in that particular organization. So uh, we've got to uh, make the decision about formality and informality. The fact is that uh, the quality of uh, the statement or the quality of communication, so to say, is a function of how formalized your communications system is. And therefore, I would rather advise you to have a formal and formalized communications system than having an informal one. Because people are not really on the same page when it comes to expressing their thoughts in terms of what exactly it is the organization is supposed to be doing. This may sound unrealistic. Suspecting people not being on the same page in terms of uh, executing the job they're supposed to be doing uh, every day. Uh, but the fact is, if uh, we do not really have formalized systems in place, these kind of variabilities uh, do show themselves. And therefore, it is uh, the job of um, the, uh, the top management and also uh, everybody within the organization to make sure that uh, they have formalized systems uh, in order to take uh, the element of subjectivity and uh, the variability uh, out of uh, the whole process and uh, to make uh, communications uh, very consistent. Uh, the reason uh, I'm talking about uh, the variability uh, in terms of um, expression of the mission on part of uh, the different people is the absence of consistent communication. An absence of communication um, which is consistent uh, basically is due to the fact that uh, the systems are not formalized, meaning the communications system. And that's what uh, we have to uh, look into so that uh, we can come up with uh, the most appropriate and effective communications um, toward the raising of the brand. The next element I'm going to talk about is values. The values also have a lot to do with uh, the power of communication because uh, the statement that we come up with in terms of values uh, occupies a very important uh, uh, the position uh, in all the materials that, uh, that we put together for uh, promoting our organization. What values really are? Well, they are very strongly held beliefs in terms of the working in a certain way. Uh, the people working for the organizations are going to have a certain way of working when they come to work. Those who have good values are good workers. Now, what are those values? Let me give you one example. Somebody working for a nonprofit operating in the area of human services they may like to be very passionate because he values sympathy and he values the saving of people's lives. And uh, what he values gets the expression or finds the expression into the way he operates. And therefore, uh, the values become extremely important the way people work. So in other words, we can say that the people who do not really have good values are not good workers. And the organization having those kind of people is not going to be in a position to achieve its mission because the way people within the organization work is not really conducive for achievement of the mission. A collection of uh, the good values, uh, therefore, uh, reflects uh, the good culture. And uh, if the values are not that good, then uh, I'll leave to your imagination to guess what the culture uh, would be like. And uh, the organization uh, may not find itself in a position to accomplish the mission. There are uh, the employees uh, working for nonprofits who are very uh, sensitive to upholding good values. And they subscribe to the code of ethics of good values so much that uh, they prefer to leave the organization if they find out their uh, organization not really following the values which it 
promotes. So in other words, the conviction uh, on ethics is uh, so strong that uh, they, they want to um, strengthen the ethical part of the strategies they are a part of. Uh, so in other words, they are the people who wouldn't like to see their organization um, formulate and then execute certain strategies which are unethical, so to say, in very simple words. And uh, therefore, okay, the values have okay, a very important place in terms of uh, okay, the brand raising. And like I said earlier, a statement on values is an extremely important statement, okay, which is part of all the literature that okay, any organization okay, puts together uh, if it is going to keep its communications uh, formalized. And uh, once those values are formalized, I think it goes without saying that uh, it brings the best out of all the people working for the organization and all the people you know, who are associated with the organization because they know that um, the values could have been communicated um, to everyone in the outer environment. They're not really limited to the internal environment of the organization. All the audiences know that these are the values that this particular organization is supposed to uphold. And now, if the organization does not do that, um, it is going to be held to it. And therefore, um, formalizing communications, a part of which also is coming up with uh, uh, a nice sounding statement on values is also an extremely important link uh, toward the uh, process of brand raising. The next element uh, of uh, this sub-segment of the organizational level of brand raising is objectives and of course goals. We know that uh, the objectives basically are an expression of um, a set of strategic guidelines which organizations follow in order to fulfill their goals. And we also know that uh, the goals basically are uh, the very specific uh, translations uh, into numbers uh, of the objectives that uh, the organization uh, puts together um, as strategic guidelines. And uh, therefore, uh, all this, the meaning objectives and then goals, they find a very strong connection with the mission and then communications. So in other words, it is with the help of communications that uh, we highlight certain objectives. Uh, we, as uh, any organization, could have to prioritize execution of different objectives. Um, it seldom it will be the case that uh, all objectives are equally important. Um, mostly, there are certain objectives which take precedence over others. And therefore, it is going to be through communications that uh, we shall decide uh, the amount of resources uh, to be deployed to certain objectives that demand a higher amount of resources. So uh, the resource-centric uh, objectives and goals are the ones which are going to be supported with uh, communications in addition to other uh, aids like resources uh, that I just uh, talked about. Do not lose sight of the fact that the elements that I've talked about so far, the meaning, vision, the mission, values, objectives, and goals are the ones that happen to be the responsibility of the top management because these are the elements that really drive the execution of all the programs. And in other words, it really means that these are the elements which are basically responsible for a dominant portion of the programs. They are, they are the ones that uh, they define the direction uh, of the programs. They are the ones that uh, uh, commit the amount of resources uh, to the programs uh, which are to be executed. And uh, therefore, uh, looking at uh, these elements in terms of their uh, the communication power is uh, what uh, we have to concentrate on. Uh, we not only have to understand the essence of these concepts, uh, which we already know, we have to now understand how are we going to derive a consistent communications uh, out of having very explicit statements uh, on all these elements so that we can keep subjectivity and vagueness 
out of the whole process and keep the creative exercise the very objective. There's a good reason for uh, keeping uh, subjectivity out of the process because uh, we here are uh, doing something which is going to lay the ground for the next level of uh, brand raising. We still have to talk about the, the point of differentiation which is going to form the, the positioning of the program and then the personality. And do not forget that once we are done with all this, that is going to lay the ground further for the uh, other levels of the, the brand raising exercise, meaning the identity and then the experiential level. In particular, the identity, because we have to do a lot of creative work in terms of creating the visual identity and also, um, you know, side by side, the, the messaging platform. It is this particular platform that we are trying to build in order for the remaining elements to really fall in place. It's uh, not only the, the positioning, uh, the personality uh, and audiences uh, in relation to this particular level I'm talking about, it also is other elements of the remaining levels, in particular, the identity level, which is going to be dependent on this particular uh, platform. So let's wait until that time uh, I start talking about the identity.